Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest news, stories, and trends and innovations from thought leaders in the industry like this guy to my right. Um, we are also coming at you live right now. We, we are live right now, Craig. Is that okay scary. with you? Very scary. <laughs> we I'm are. glad I had half a cup of coffee already. <laughs> I'm glad I've had three and a half already. <laughs> anyway, we're coming at you live from PTC 2020 or 20. 2020, 2020, 2025 in beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. And as I said, to my right, I have Mr. Craig Kaplan. Craig is the SVP of Americas and EMEA for Zenlayer. Thanks for having me, Dean. Yeah, Appreciate no. The time. Thank you. No, thank you. We've got a, we've got a lot to talk about. AI is on the top of everyone's mind or on the tip of everyone's tongue right now. We're we're going to be no different with the interview with you today. Is that okay? Right, right. I'm really surprised AI is the topic uh, today. Uh, to <laughs> yeah. Never really hear much about AI these days. Yeah. Around no, uh, nobody's around the saying. World. You know what, Dean? Tell me more about this broadband. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> nobody's really talking about that anymore. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump in. We're going to start with challenge. We're going to start with the the heavy one, right? Yeah. The challenges of implementing AI-powered edge solutions in emerging markets. How are you guys making that happen? Well, I'm glad you're asking about emerging <laughs> markets because uh, Zen Layer is all about the emerging flowing market. out into the emerging markets, as you know. Mm -hmm. So we're incredibly excited because in the AI community, we're really being tasked to consult with AI companies, not just on the connectivity, but mm -hmm. on the complete compute stack from the LLM model and connecting LLMs to data sources, but really the future of the inference uh, use cases. And how do you have AI applications work on the edge, particularly in emerging markets? Yeah. And so one of the things that we've uh, really excited about is our AI fabric. And our AI mm -hmm. fabric in Asia is just really incredible. We've launched this ultra low latency AI fabric that's mm -hmm. connecting the data centers in APAC from Singapore, Hong Kong, to Tokyo, to Johor. Uh, and it's a high capacity, 200 terabit backbone. And it's really about, you know, what is the, the need for AI applications mm -hmm. out there? And it's low latency and the type of connectivity that you need that improves the experience for the end user yeah. as you deploy AI out into the world and into your end users in all these different types of markets. You know, okay, so I'm going to go off script already, but oh, I, feel well, like, great. I feel like you can. Well, I'm glad it. that must have been a good answer if you <laughs> want was, to go off script. It, it was perfect. Right. Um, but it, it really does feel like we're at this kind of crossroads of um, being able to actually provide a service and actually having an application that people understand well enough to know that they need it. Yeah. Um, and I feel like kind of Zenlayer kind of plays right there, especially in those emerging markets. Are, are you finding that as the as the technology, because we know that it's still relatively, you know, it's it, it's it's in its infancy still. Mm -hmm. But as it matures and as people become more aware and unaware of how no, knowing that they need it, but don't know how or why they need it. Are you finding it challenging to to consult on that and to actually provide the service? That's a great question, Dean. I, I, I think we're not finding it challenging to consult. We're finding that customers are really having a challenge to understand exactly what yeah, they need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so our goal is to provide a, a really fantastic range of flexibility to really understand what do you need in mm -hmm. terms of your compute and your network stack. And so we find that we're in this fantastic position in the industry that we're offering both a full suite of solution Got it. and we're offering it in 50 countries. So <laughs> when you want to go to a uh, you know, partner <laughs> and say, okay, well, how do you handle the connectivity, not just in APAC and Southeast Asia or connectivity into China, but also how do you do the connectivity back into the Middle East? How do you get the backhaul from South America back to Asia or back to North America? Yeah. And so really we can have that view, right? That's global. Yeah. yeah. And that really allows us to say, okay, we understand what your connectivity is today, Yeah. but let's plan for this need. And then what, how are you going to plan for the future where you might not really know exactly what you need That's in terms it. Yeah. of the application, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. workloads. Yeah. So we're really proud that last year in Q4, we, uh, we deployed our GPU edge. Mm -hmm. Uh, and launch that and congratulations actually was at capacity for the demand on that is <laughs> shocking surprising right <laughs> surprising that the gpu launch was uh, yeah. at capacity but we're continuing to invest incredibly into our network our, our pace of, of growth is incredible not mm -hmm. just in the ai market mm -hmm. but we're also seeing in the enterprise the global 2000 uh -huh. clients 
you know, really every enterprise needs to transform into an AI company, particularly into their IT uh, environment, but also across, you know, all departments. Yeah. And so really every client that we have across all these segments is finding this need for this expertise and this understanding to really think about it strategically. And I think in our industry, it's oftentimes, all right, I need this problem solved, this connectivity issue solved, or this compute issue solved. But really, you need to look at it very strategically long term, yeah. because these these requirements are going to change. And you need a partner that can be flexible and, and, and you can roll out onto our bare metal or onto our GPU bare metal, or you can roll out into our virtualization cloud. We're mm -hmm. seeing a lot of clients wanting the flexibility of having their core workloads run on bare metal, mm -hmm. but then to be able to burst into our virtualization yep. yeah. cloud, which see more and more of the recognition that that's going to be an important way to, yeah. to deploy. Uh, and so we're, we're excited because we feel we're in the right place. We've done the right investments over the last 10 years, uh, you know, 300 data centers right now, and that's growing. And really having uh, clients come to us and say, we, we need that flexibility yep. internally, infrastructure clients. We're virtualizing our own POP deployments, and we need to be up fast. We yeah. need to be able to move with the markets. So, so much to unpack here right now, right? So, there, no, there, there's so much. I like to make your job difficult, Dean. No, uh, you've actually just made it really, really easy <laughs> because that was the best summary I could have possibly given. But that, that's exactly why I asked the question because yeah. everybody knows it's here um, and, and and that it's coming and that that transformation. It's like, it's like digital transformation on steroids yeah. and because we, we everybody knew digital transformation was coming and digital acceleration was was already happening but ai only made everybody go now what yeah. you know and especially yeah. on the enterprise side and so you guys you guys are really already kind of you know ears deep in consulting on that and making sure that these businesses um these global businesses yeah. are are prepared to meet those those AI challenges. That's great. So uh, amazing. Thank you very much for that. Um, but let's talk a little bit about the um, the opportunities for, oh, this is fun, revolutionizing is in this question. But yeah. let, um, the unique opportunities do you see for AI and revolutionizing the digital experiences in underserved regions of South America and Africa? That is a heavy question. You're on. <laughs> well, yeah, that is that is a heavy question. I mean, we've been deployed in in regions like Africa for mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. you know. And one of the things that we're experts in now, and I, we cut our teeth on some very difficult markets, yeah. uh, you know, ten years ago when we when we launched Zenlayer, um, and so we really understand the challenges in terms of ro uh, deploying into uh, regions like Africa, and our pops are already mm -hmm. up and running there, and we're expanding in Africa. Um, but really, it's about understanding the, the local compliance and licensing needs that we take that challenge away from our yes. customers. So literally, the meetings yesterday were, how do you handle compliance in 50 <laughs> different countries? Yeah. Well, we handle it because you don't need to handle it. Yeah. But it really does take a team that's dynamically understanding the changing uh, you know, compliance and infosec and and data requirements. And it all goes it, hand in glove with the speed to market concept right. that you were talking about earlier too. Exactly. Yeah. So that, and this frankly is why a lot of sort of par providers out there are regional. Yeah. Right. Cause it is not an easy thing to yeah. do. We have an incredible dedicated compliance team that rolls up to our general counsel who's wonderful, works in our headquarters in LA. I get to hear from her Gotta have all that. the compliance <laughs> challenges yeah. that she's, she's yeah. dealing with, but we'll have, you know, requests coming in, particularly new customers are like, mm -hmm. oh, we're going into uh, Saudi Arabia, we're going into Dubai, you know, do you have this type of license or do you have this kind of requirements? And we have to invest not only in the infrastructure in those countries, but invest into the, the relationships in order to make things work properly yeah. and, and follow. We had a request just in December for a, a license in the Philippines, and we have multiple licenses in the Philippines, but this customer need a very specific type of license. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you could count on is that we didn't have that license, but we have the resources, we have the understanding, yeah. and we started to work on that. And because of the fact that we've been operating in the Philippines yeah. for years and years. That experience is invaluable, we can, obviously. We can roll it out. Now, at the same time, you know, we're working with a lot of governments around the world. Well, that so sounds there fun. Is, uh, you know, there's a timing challenge sure. in terms of how quickly can you move, yeah. right? We can't accelerate what 
you know, governments yeah. Yeah, are, yeah, yeah, are yeah. doing or different agencies are doing. So we have to educate our customers as mm -hmm. well in terms of timing, in terms of we're already deployed there. Fantastic. If you want to go into a new country, uh, and even if we don't have a pop there, come to us because we have the understanding, yes. even in countries we might not be deployed. We just had a, a, a request to deploy uh, more uh, infrastructure into Pakistan, for instance. And folks are like, I didn't even realize you had pops in Pakistan. Like, well, yes, we Surprise. do. Our map is very, very complicated. We, yeah, said, yeah. Uh, we give a map out yeah. to clients and they go, I can't really read this. And we're like, well, that's because we good don't news. have enough space on the map, you know, and not enough lines to do. Yeah. But good news, really, we can read it. We can, we can go. But the speed, too, at which we can operate. Yeah. You know, we're a private company, but we're a very, very uh, large company that's a yeah. flat organization. Uh, when I work with Joe, our CEO, and Joe, everybody knows Joe in the industry and here at PTC, but we're very involved from a leadership standpoint of understanding what our customers need mm -hmm. and how to solve those challenges. Yeah. We just did a, uh, an AI deployment, which I think we is, is in process in, mm -hmm. uh, in Japan. And okay. that client specifically wanted two different LLM uh, data centers, separate data centers. And the client came to us and said, we need to deploy quickly. Like, that's not surprising. Shock, everybody, you do. <laughs> everybody wants, you know, yeah. 20 megawatts tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and this is a, a one megawatt deployment. And we actually went through the contracting process with this client in 20 days and worked with our partners to find the right. That sounds miraculous. So. And like, <laughs> and it is. And, and yeah. unfortunately, we set high expectations. <laughs> yeah, and then we yeah, have yeah. to meet those yeah, high yeah, expectations yeah. again and again and again. So, like, yeah, please do bring us those opportunities. Yeah. We're not always going to contract them in 20 days, but our team is incredibly uh, fast in terms of the support and the service that we provide before we bring uh, yeah. customers on, but as we manage and deploy and advise on their on the broader global deployments. Craig, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Jen. I really appreciate it. You, you bet. You bet. And thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. Stay curious, stay connected, and we'll see you soon.